Good evening, everyone, and welcome <coughs> to the December 8th, 2022 meeting of the Penfield Planning Board. We'll begin the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you, everyone, for coming tonight. Lori, would you please call the roll? Yep. Hetsky? Hetsky here. Burton? Burton here. Knauer? Knauer here. Tidings? Tidings here. Sangster? Sangster here. O'Connor? O'Connor here. Gray here. Okay. We have minutes from our last meeting on November 10th. Hopefully, everybody's had an opportunity to review them. Can we entertain a motion to approve? So moved. Second, tidings. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. Okay. Uh, all right. Doug, you want to uh, start going over our table items? Yeah, so we'll go through the quick ones here. Um, <coughs> table application number one, the Pathstone project. Um, we've been in contact with um, the engineers on the project, we're looking to set up a meeting with them to review um, what they're looking to do um, so they can come back as a sort of a sketch level review before the board. Um, so at this time, um, you guys can continue tabling it. So before we do that, um, the last time they were here, mm -hmm. we made a request <coughs> that they provide some more specific documentation relative to the type of housing and any conditions for eligibility for the housing, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, we had quite a bit of dialogue about that. Did, did anything go out to them to, to capture all the information from the public hearing? Yes, we did send a tabling resolution um, outlining uh, the board's requests. Okay, have we gotten any response from the applicant regarding that request? Uh, yes, their their response was that they wanted to set up a meeting with staff to discuss okay. and go through. But they through. haven't actually responded to the information that we asked for? No, not at this time. Okay. Uh, move to table. I'll second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. All right, our second tabled application is the Chick-fil-A at 2130 <coughs> Airport Nine Mile Point Road. Um, that application has been quiet. Um, we haven't received any updates. Um, I do know the engineering department's been in contact with the um, property owner. I believe there may be um, some more conversation going on between the property owner and uh, the applicant um, in this case. So at this time, since we don't have any new information to review, you can comfortably table it. Okay. Okay. So move. move to continue tabling. Yeah, I'll second. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. All right. Tabled application number three, the rg &E at 2070 Empire Boulevard. Um, we have been in contact with the engineers and applicants on that one. Um, they had, they did send in a formal request to be tabled until at least the January meeting. Um, they said they were still trying to work on incorporating um, all of the board's comments and comments from the public, um, and they're hoping to be back um, at one of the January meetings. Okay. Does anybody want to? Yeah, I'll move to table. <coughs> we have a second. Hiding second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. We want to talk uh, number five and then go back to number four? Yep, we can <coughs> do that. Um, so 2305 Penfield Road, the three lot subdivision. Um, after um, the last meeting with the applicant, um, staff met with the applicant and their engineer to go through um, some of the engineering challenges on the property. Um, we did have a fruitful conversation with them um, and gave them some suggestions and ideas um, going forward. Um, so at this time they have requested to be tabled so that they can um, 
look to gather more information specifically, I think they're going to be doing some deep hole testing to uh, try to figure out uh, bedrock depth uh, on the site to see if they can look at alternative stormwater management techniques for the subdivision. So they've requested to be tabled until the January meeting. And I had, I had a question for staff on that. Mm -hmm. The group home that's next door, mm -hmm. the water control facility they have there, is that a retention or a detention? Uh, retention, I believe. And where does that drain? Uh, it discharges to the east towards their property. And then in an overflow situation, their overflow um, okay. um, goes towards this property. So, so she flows down to their property? Uh, no, there is an eight There's inch an pipe. eight inch pipe that is basically at an elevation. So they can take the first hundred year storm and then if by every chance there's another 100 year storm, that's when it would go through the outfall. Otherwise, it basically sits in there and evaporates, infiltrates, it does whatever it needs to do. So that was basically designed to detain. Yeah, sorry, it might be a detention yeah. pond more. more and anyway. prevent anything that would occur within a definition of a 100 year storm right. for affecting the neighboring property. Correct. Okay. But if there's 200 year storms in the same week, then all bets are off. Then they. Well, we're all going to have to move. So. Fire hose. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Going into the neighbor's property. Right. Yeah, I was by the site and noticed that and just. Yes, there is. A, it's yeah. just basically an overflow for when it reaches that elevation. So but mm. it was sized accordingly. Yeah, and there was. When I was by, there was no water in there. No. Okay, thank you. Okay, I will move to table. I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. All right. All right, tabled application number four, um, the arbors at Penfield. Okay, so since our last meeting, um, staff has worked to um, draft an amended negative declaration. Um, so in, in terms of seeker for this project, seeker was completed as part of the preliminary overall and final for phase one. The board issued a negative declaration on July 14th, 2022, um, adopting those findings that it was not gonna have a moderate or large impact to the environment. The final application is largely in conformance with the preliminary application, um, same number of units, same layout generally, but there was new information that was presented since they are seeking to come in as one large secondary phase instead of multiple phases. Um, it did change some information um, with traffic mitigation and that was the primary um, section of the negative declaration that staff amended um, was to include the new metrics by which um, New York State DOT was going to be requiring mitigations to be reviewed and installed um, instead of doing it on a per phase basis as has been previously reviewed by the board. Um, State DOT agreed to do it based on um, certificates of occupancy issued, um, essentially breaking it down into four phases based on the number of units um, under review and for approval. Um, in addition, they were looking to require, and it is something that was captured, that um, that the mitigations would have to sort of be preemptive, um, that they would have to be installed prior to the phase under which they would be required uh, will begin construction. And so that it was captured both in um, through correspondence with uh, the applicant's traffic engineer uh, in their TIS and an updated memo from their um, their consultant. Um, we did send it out to our consultant for review. Um, he concurred with the findings of their consultant, as well as um, State DOT, who provided information that they were um, comfortable with uh, the findings. So staff has drafted an amended, a, a draft amended negative declaration for your review. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I, uh, I'm, Overall, good with it. I think that um, 
we should, you know, potentially condition it based on a final review from our council. Mm -hmm. uh, he's unable to be here. Um, so I don't know if you want to yeah. go uh, ahead and. So I, I will make a motion for conditional approval for the negative declaration uh, pending yes, approval by council. Tidings second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings. And I'd also make a motion for conditional approval pending review by council for the um, approval resolution. Tidings second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. Okay. Go. Go to go, work. Go for it. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> Have a good Christmas. All right. Um, we do we can either one. talk about the, why don't we talk about the uh, mud right now and okay. then stop at yeah. seven versus uh, doing it the other way around. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> as the board is aware, um, there was a uh, moratorium placed in July of last year on the mixed use development district uh, to allow staff um, to uh, review and revise uh, the mixed use development district regulations and the, sub and the manual that goes along with it um, to provide greater clarity. Um, in the regulations, um, as, as you guys are aware, with the four applications we've reviewed up to this point in the mixed use development district, there have been times where we've had challenges where there was incons inconsistencies or ambiguity within the code. Um, so um, staff has undertaken a review and has provided draft regulations to the town board. As part of the town board's review, they had held a public hearing last night. Um, they are required to get input from the planning board uh, as part of that. So I want to quickly run through with you guys um, what we changed, what stayed the same. Um, so largely, uh, things that stayed the same is the district boundaries. No new parcels were added. No parcels were, take, were taken out. Um, the district has three zones, A, B, and C. Um, those district boundaries did not change either. Those zone boundaries did not change either. Some regulations will still apply universally within the district, whereas some will be zone specific. Um, and the maximum development density specified for each zone s stayed the same. So it's still 20 units per acre in zone A. Um, and that, go to the next slide. Um, the changes that were made, we clarified the categorization of uses within a proposed development district. Um, we moved a lot of information from the manual into the code, um, clearly defined what is the required mix of uses in each zone, um, you know, in this case, breaking it down um, based on the acreage of the property. And we moved all the development regulations and design standards from the MUD manual directly into code. Um, so that way, if there is any ambiguity between or issue between the manual and code, the code will stand. Uh, we did make some procedural clarifications and modified the review process. We'll still go through the standard sketch plan and preliminary final review process, but we tried to make clear what the expectations should be um, between meeting with staff, sketch plan, what the sketch plan entails, what a sketch letter will um, result in, and what the preliminary final review will be like. Uh, we moved the terms and codes, which were sort of meshed into the manual and part of the code in the 5.12 section, just to the general, the code's terms defined um, section. Um, I think there's one more item on the last slide. Um, and re revise the med manual. Yeah. 
sorry. So I guess we went through all those procedural changes. Oh, the other thing we did is we added an administrative review, the way the code was currently written, especially for conditional use permits. Anytime, you know, Joe's Pizza Shop changed to Amy's Ice Cream Shop, we would have to come back for planning board review as the code was previously written. It didn't allow for um, an administrative review for minor operator changes, owner changes, and things like that, or uses that are similar in type. Um, uh, we did specify the type and extent of the planning board's waiver ability. That had something, been something the planning board had discussed previously um, with other applications was if the board was allowed flexibility, how much flexibility the board was allowed. Um, so we did define where, what, and what the limits are for the planning board's waiver ability. And anything that would go beyond that would require zoning board input. Um, and we used to... Uh, and we outline, generally outline the process applicants need to follow. Um, so design changes in zone A, mixes of use. Um, so for zone A, less than three acres, minimum two uses, one residential, one non-residential, three to six, four uses with at least two residential, two non-residential, and more than six acres, a mix of five uses with at least three residential uses and two non-residential uses. The minimum non-residential use percentage stayed the same at 20%, same with the open space. Instead of it being a recommendation, it is now a regulation for 20%. Um, and we set a maximum non-residential occupancy of 25,000 square feet per user user, which still holds to the big box is discouraged, but provides a definite boundary um, based on, we looked at um, you know small groceries and things like that. Um, we're coming up with that. Zone B, stuck with the same, less than three, three to six, more than six, define the uses. Um, they trended more, we kept it so it trends more residential than non-residential in the zone B district. Um, we did add a, min a minimum non-residential percentage. Um, it was one of the areas where the code was ambiguous previously, um, was on how much non-residential was required or whether there was a maximum set. So we modified that. Uh, and then we um, upped the non-residential occupancy to 7,500 square feet per user um, based on feedback. Zone C continues to be residential only, same as it was. Um, planning board waiver gives you guys additional flexibility to be able to um, bend or review applications with differing um, ideas on what they want to do within a specific threshold during the site plan review. There will be um, a criteria to go through similar to like we do with conditional use permits um, to justify why a waiver is needed, but it um, keeps the review with the planning board um, instead of having to do joint planning board, zoning board. But um, anything that goes outside of those established thresholds would be a zoning board application for variance. And then we, this was just going through the, the modified table of contents for the manual. Um, so we did change it. The manual is now, instead of being a lot of regulations, um, really explains what mixed use is, why mixed use in Penfield, or sort of the history of mixed use in Penfield, um, best practices in mixed use development design, um, and um, some examples of from other areas of mixed use development districts that are similar in type or nature, um, sort of for inspiration. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I believe we provided the regulations, they were in your, the draft regulations were in the drop as well as I think I sent it out via email as well. So it yeah, it's a lot of information to process, I know. Just like to get some, some information on the record while we're here. <clears throat> um, the town board gave us every indication last night that um, rather than move the proposed modifications to the zoning ordinance forward, at this time in its current state, that they would prefer to extend the moratorium to permit more dialogue um, between the board and the and the town board and 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 from 
the public and from the people that this most affects the, the applicants, the developers. Um, so um, I'd like to also point out for the record that uh, there are a number of modifications in the proposed draft that have not been vetted by this board um, that, that probably should be. Um, and most importantly, uh, although we did participate uh, in the development of the, the new local law, um, there was no dialogue with this board with respect to modifications to the manual itself. Um, we found out last night for the first time that there was a redraft of the manual. We have not received a copy. Um, we were told that uh, there was a copy online, but that turns out to be, at least as of last night, perhaps not accurate. So anyhow, just for the record, there's a number of things that, that need to take place. Um, so, and, and, and uh, some significant information coming from the public at large. Um, and uh, the testimony of uh, uh, one of the attorneys in the audience um, uh, about how these changes might impact um, future development. So um, we just want to get that out there. Um, there needs to be a, uh, you know, maybe more cohesive process between what the town staff is doing and what the board agrees to before this goes back to the town board for a recommendation. <coughs> And uh, um, at, at this point, we don't know what that timing is or, or how long that process takes, but it, it appears that we probably have a month or two. Is that the sense you got, AJ? Yeah, I mean, the sense I got is that while they're, you know, I don't know if anybody's excited about extending the moratorium. If we can get things done by January, that would be great. It's based on the input that I saw and heard um, and that has been submitted um, to the town, I think that there's still work to do. And I'd rather, personally, I'd rather, I don't wanna, I wasn't really in favor of the moratorium to begin with, but I understand why it was put forth and I can't believe that I'm actually saying, hey, we should extend it. Um, because we want to make a, we want to make forward progress with this, not lateral. So we just, um, and there's been enough feedback that uh, suggests that a lot of the changes are lateral changes, not making things better. So I think that we, we still have some work to do on it. Um, I mean, that's my two cents. Um, Terry and Bob, I don't know if you have any initial comments on it at the moment or if... Uh, I, I had one question. You were talking about, you know, the, the zone boundaries. Mm -hmm. Is there a, I guess the term would be maybe a survey legal description of what those boundaries are or is it more just kind of an overlay that's on a document. And then the second question is, for those zone boundaries, the waiver ability, would that rest with the planning board or the zoning board as far as those I, I zone boundaries? I answer both those okay. questions. I, the, the original zone boundaries were just kind of overlaid over the map, right. not, you know, with specific locations of latitude and longitude or anything and that is a potential um, gray area that we may want to tighten up and really define those because part of the suggested changes include giving the planning board some discretion on um, not really let's say reducing the size of a particular zone on a given parcel, but moving the boundaries around. Right. So we would need to know where they are uh, in order to modify the location of them. 
Which we've yeah. already done on two applications. Right, right. We kind of adjusted, yeah. And Peter, and, and Peter went on record saying that we had that kind of broad authority. Um, okay, I just wanted to I, be sure in this iteration that, <clears throat> you know, that continued or that would be one of the things that we had latitude on. Yeah, and one of the other things is that, you know, in some of the applications we've been asked to, re say, render an opinion on, let's say, building height or, mm -hmm. um, you know, some other factor, and the manual and the code as it stands, does it wasn't really clear. And so the some of the intent of the changes were to make those things clear, give the this board the authority to modify or um, you know let us go back to building height if somebody wants something a little bit higher and we determine that it's it's it makes for a good project there are factors that we uh, consider similar to the way the zoning board weighs a variance or at least that's what we're trying trying to right. do so that it's not just a willy-nilly type process but right. there is an actual methodology for uh, allowing those types of very vari uh, variable uh, they're not really waivers we're not waiving uh, uh, we're not being given authority to waive a requirement in the local law it's really some discretionary authority right uh, putting we could modify some dimensional criteria or spatial criteria or you know something along those if lines overall it's, it, we're not, it makes we're not sense being for the given, project we're not right, being yeah. given authority to waive something so okay that's one of the things that we need to talk about when we when we take a deeper look at this is some of the language that so yeah so some the of the language to, maybe there's a better yeah, term you replace the term waiver with the term you know uh, discretionary authority yeah it's, you know something along those lines maybe um, you know we'll we'll have to reach out to Peter and see what his thoughts are there but okay so anyway it is you know the goal is to make it better and make it more clear uh, for everybody uh, us staff applicants general public so that it's a uh, clear or more concise process and we get successful projects that the entire town can be proud of so uh, with that I don't know if there's any other quick discussion. We have about two minutes before our public hearing starts. If you guys would like, <coughs> staff could draft something quick to the town board, essentially requesting additional time to conduct further review, or at least make the planning boards. Yeah, I would uh, move that we draft a letter to send to the town board that acknowledges the <coughs> receipt of the request, that we've begun our review, that there is substantial input from the public and interested parties that we need some additional time to review. Okay, I can do that. Yeah, so I'll I will move that letter. Anybody's? And we had one another question. Doug, did we ever find out who owns the property in front? Uh, we were questioning that. You were gonna find the out. The Grossman's property? What is it? Yeah. The Grossman property, the old Grossman's? Yeah. Because we um, talked about that. Now that they're going to, we're going to change the plans around. We're going to check. Yeah, it's, it's an LLC. Um, I don't know. Any well, if we were going to address that, I'm saying, you know, at the time that it, we want to find out. They're going out. that pro that property is under the review with code enforcement. So any action on okay. cleaning up the property will have to go through our code enforcement process. I don't know exactly where they are on that. I believe they have issued a violation. And it won't have anything to do with this application? No, because they're not the owner of the okay. property. Okay. Do we have a second? I will, I will second that motion. Okay. Hetsky? Hetsky, aye. Burton? Burton, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. Tidings? Tidings, aye. <coughs> okay. 
We will now move into the public hearing portion of our meeting. And um, we have one application tonight. For those of you who are not familiar with the process here in Penfield, the applicants can come up to one of these two tables um, and set up shop, so to speak. Uh, if you have a laptop that you wanna use to present the proposed application, that is fine. I believe that's a HDMI cable that you can plug into. Correct me if I'm wrong. Nope, you're right. Uh, control people. <laughs> and, uh, and then uh, once the applicant presents the, the project to the board, the board will ask our questions and then we'll open it up to the audience for public comment. If you are not present here in the town hall and would still like to make a comment, you can do so one of at least two ways. Uh, one way is by calling in during the meeting tonight at 585-340-8771. You will be put in a queue and uh, we'll take your calls uh, when the time comes. You can also visit the Town of Penfield website, which is www.penfield.org. And there should be a link to this meeting on the website at which you may render an opinion in writing electronically and uh, submit your comments that way. And uh, you can also do that live in real time tonight. So with that, uh, Doug, would you please read our tonight's public hearing application? If you're, you're the applicants, if you want to come up to one of the two tables, whichever one you prefer, and grab a chair. Application number one, Passero Associates, 242 West Main Street, Suite 100, Rochester, New York. 14614 on behalf of Royal Wash Development LLC requests under Chapter 250, Article 12-12.2 and Article 13-13.2 of the Code of the Town of Penfield for preliminary and final site plan and conditional use permit approval for the construction of a 4,100 square foot automatic car wash with associated site improvements on a 0 0.87 acre property at 1922 Empire Boulevard, Webster, New York, 14580. The property is now or formerly owned by Royal Wash Development, LLC, and zoned General Business, GB. Application number 22P-0028, SBL number 093.02-1-20. Okay, welcome. If you just introduce yourselves and where you're from, name and address, that would be great for the record. And um, let's uh, hear what you got. Mm -hmm. So I'm Alex Benoit. I, uh, I'm the representative for Royal Wash Development. I live in Pittsburgh, New York. <coughs> um, Excuse me, could the application move his microphone, please? Yes. So there are millions of folks around the planet watching, <laughs> and they all want to hear what you have to say. <laughs> I bet, I bet. So yeah, uh, Alex Benoit, uh, Royal Wash Development, uh, Pittsburgh, New York. Uh, Andrew Burns, uh, Pastor Associates, civil engineer representing Royal Wash Development. Okay. I do apologize, we seem to have some issues sharing this. I think our PC TV If folks. the applicant would proceed, I will come up and take a look. Okay. I'm going to pull it up for now. In the meantime, we might be able to use the PDFs that are on mics. And you can just say, hey, Vanna, next slide, kind of thing. He loves it when you call him Vanna. <laughs> <laughs> and those look to be the most recent, so that should do just fine. Um, we got Andrew Burns from Pastor Associates representing Royal Wash Development. We are here tonight requesting um, site plan approval and conditional use permit for an automatic car wash located at 1922 Empire Boulevard, zoned uh, general business. 
The existing site is uh, 0.82 acres and currently uh, well, the existing use was a Taco Bell. I believe they are relocating up the road. Um, the project would um, consist of removing the existing building, most of the um, existing pavement, um, while maintaining the access points both on Empire Boulevard and down to Baytown Plaza to the south. Um, um, from either access point, um, customers can enter from, again, Empire or from the Baytown um, uh, Plaza. They'll enter one of three stacking lanes, um, which they will pass through an unmanned kiosk. Uh, most of our customers are prepaid members, so the process is generally pretty quick. Um, they will then loop around, enter the tunnel, um, get their car cleaned, and for those of you who haven't seen, they do have that nice brick facade and uh, uh, the angled roof um, in which they will leave the car wash with a rather long exit lane, um, which is beneficial to, um, for any stacking issues along Empire, um, from which they can either uh, exit the site and or double back into the site to utilize the vacuums. Uh, to date, we have attended a uh, design review meeting with PRC um, in which we heard, you know, their initial comments. I believe the project <coughs> was generally uh, well received. Um, we have submitted to the town, uh, obviously the planning board, as well as ZBA. Um, since then, we've received comments from uh, the PRC um, and landscaping, which we have um, received and addressed uh, to date, which uh, that's what we brought here tonight. I apologize it wasn't a bit sooner, but everything again has been addressed to date. And as far as uh, uh, agencies, uh, New, York State, uh, New York State DOT has been um, uh, submitted to because we're not doing any proposed work within the right of way. Great, thank you. <coughs> um, they thank will you, not, Brian. They will not require All right. Sorry. Now you can put that down if you'd like. <laughs> Thanks, Alex. <Austin. laughs> Vanna, too. <laughs> um, so yes, we did submit the project to DOT um, in which it, they determined if we were not doing any work in the right of way, no permit was required. Um, the project has also been submitted to and approved by Monroe County Water Authority and Pure Waters for both the water and sanitary services. Um, we do require some variances for the site, one of them being a side setback for the building. Um, that just helps us get that third stacking lane in there. Um, building mounted signage, you're only allowed two, or allowed one, we're requesting two. Um, and then also a pole sign setback and green space uh, setback, both of which the existing site and use have uh, variances for. And I just want to touch base quickly on landscaping. As I said, um, we are slightly um, increasing the, uh, or decreasing the green space, but you know, we think we more than make up for it with the proposed landscaping around the perimeter, screen along the front and the south to, I believe the uh, it's gas station um, <coughs> is along to the, as well as to the plaza on the south and uh, east sides of the property. Is that Valvoline? Down there. I talk about don't think no, it's a Hess station. Oh, the Hess station's yeah. right next door. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Speedway probably now, right? Or Speedway, yeah, sorry, Speedway. Um, and with that, um, Alex and myself are happy to answer any questions the board may have. Can you go through the uh, architecturals maybe? Do you have renderings with you? I have elevations. Is this gonna be a Royal or a gold car wash? Ultimately, it'll be a go car wash. So to be developed by Royal Wash Development, go car wash will take over the operations portion. Okay. Yeah, I just had a question because the uh, I didn't I've never seen the actual go. I think you got one or two of them actual go compared to the Royal. I, I've been by Royal. Yeah. I just wanted to know which one it's going to the, look. They're like. they're currently all operated by go car wash. The the signage is in the process of being converted over. I think the one off the 390 over by the airport. Charlie, yeah. Yeah, That's that right. one's converted over. 
uh, and then various others have started their uh, their signage to go transition to go, to go car change wash. to go. So Royal, yeah, the, the branding. But the buildings will still so that building looked a little different. I didn't really look at it closely. Will it look more the, like the go one or the Royal like on Monroe? The, all all the buildings are actually identical. Really? Yeah. There, there might be slight variations in I found height this on the web. at times, but for the mo for the most part, they're all identical. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I, did you say on the web? We did open two in in the Buffalo area that were different. Uh, the, um, they were purchased. Royal Car Wash purchased them from another developer, and it had already been through town approvals, and we had to keep them. The design's different. So there are two. If you search around on the web, that were in Hamburg and West Seneca that are different. But other, other than that, this is our standard design. Sorry. No, no, that, that's totally fine. So can you maybe go through some of the <coughs> architectural features of the structure? Is it brick or is it brick? So I, I, I might use the wrong terminology here, uh, but they're all, it's all quick brick. So it's, it's like a brick facade. They're like, what do you call it? Same them? thing McDonald's uses. Yeah. Um, it's like a thin brick facade type panel or it, whatever. The, is it actual it's like a brick, brick material block. or is it plastic? No, it's all a brick material, but it's essentially like a, like a CMU brick, but it's a brick material. Is, am I saying that right? I, I believe so, yeah. yes. It's actually not, it's not clay, it's actually concrete okay. product, um, but it has the look of brick. So rather than putting it a black backup and putting a brick veneer on it, they call it quick brick because you you bed the CMU and inside it's concrete masonry unit and outside it looks like brick. Hmm. Okay. With the texture and everything. <clears throat> they have all different kinds of textures, yeah. but you can see what they're looking at here. You know, this is, you know, um, Standard running bond, it's, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Terry, do you have uh, any other? Yeah, just a couple ones. Uh, the variances, you said four altogether? Um, that's correct. And you're scheduled, what, December 15th for zoning board on that, correct? It's actually the January meeting. Oh, January 8th? I believe it's the 19th. 19th, yep, it's the 19th. It's the week after our meeting. Uh, hours of operation? Uh, they operate 8 to 8. Every day? Monday through Saturday. Sunday, I think they close an hour early. 7. Lighting on the building 24 7 or no. 8 to 8? Uh, the lighting is during hours of operations. I think with some leeway as staff comes in and leaves. The, so a half hour to an hour before and after. And then they have uh, just the wall sconces or wall packs overnight. EJ's my lighting expert. Okay. No <laughs> comment, I'm sure. And the lighting is part of the. Most problem. likely. <laughs> <laughs> um, now you got two entrances one in Empire, you said one goes out into the uh, Baytown, correct? Correct. So, so is that like the emergency exit if you need to get out, say somebody gets in line to go into the car wash? They can zip out in the back. No, the the emergency exit. There's a there's a spillway there after the pay lanes. Mm -hmm. That's the way out of the wash sequence. Okay. I, I, there to the to, left. Yeah, just as you're entering the tunnel, there's a there's mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. uh, exit way from the. Blow blow that up there, Andy. How many cars can you stack uh, once a, they come out of the car wash to Empire Boulevard? You know. I believe it's nine. Nine. Yeah, yeah it's right on here. It's, uh, it's on sheet two. Is that what they usually are nine? Stacking. It. it oh, sorry, six. It varies all over the map. I mean, I know we have some with only two to three. This escape lane. Um, do you have any others? In the whole, in your whole system, that are configured in the same fashion, where they spill out into the inbound, into the inbound, inbound uh, pay lanes, where they're, you know, you're going to be basically going the wrong way down a one-way street. Yeah, essentially, I do believe we do. I'm having trouble coming up with the um, exactly which one. 
at the moment. And what kind of, um, you know, out of every hundred cars, how many, oh shoot, you know, I can't do this right now. I need to bail out and the, the, go get a cheeseburger or something. How many? The intent for that lane is truly for a, a breakdown. actual breakdown. Um, in which point, you know, I believe the employees would come out, back up all the cars would be quite the process. But just to clear out those cars past the booths, um, I believe if you actually couldn't do it, you are kind of stuck going through there. But, you know, I'm sure I believe the attendant wouldn't charge you or anything like that, that they'd help you get out of there. But if you are getting those three Q lanes or not, I don't think they're going to back everyone out just because someone doesn't want to. Well, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm asking the question more as a how often does it happen? It's, it's extremely rare. Yeah. Um, is it? I'd say out of 360 days of operation, uh, there's maybe two or three days where you get one or two customers that, that might do that. Okay. So it's... It's very infrequent, it's, yeah. It's very rare. Yeah. Again, most of the, the customers being prepaid members, they kind of know what they're getting themselves into when they go in there. Um, you know, and I guess this entrance to the south here. Um, what is the percentage of prepaid versus 75 cash? to 80%. 75 to 80%. Yeah. Okay. How about where are you going to store snow? I think it was labeled on the... Yeah, we, we agree the site the site's pretty tight, um, but we do have some you know green space to the south of those stacking lanes, um, and then obviously in a bad situation, you know we've hauled snow off before. We'd bring in loaders and, and buckets and bring it off site if we had to. So if you're what kind of landscaping is going in there that will will that accept piles of snow? Yeah, I believe we went with just taller trees in that area. Nothing, nothing too small. Salt uh, resistant? Uh, yes. Do you know how much of a variance you need for the green space? Like what is it now and, and what will it be? Yeah. Yeah, so existing they have 0 0.2, two acres, um, and we're proposing 0.19, so 0 0.03, very close. Okay, so about 1,300 square feet less? Yep, plus or minus. Um, okay. But you said that's going to be awesome. Yes. Green space. Correct. <laughs> to make up for it. Is that what Lopez said or is that what you guys said? <laughs> Not Lopez, I mean... Uh, Bruce Soretsky. Yeah, Bruce Soretsky. Uh, well, we're talking about game. that. Um, Bruce didn't make any comment about that, and, and maybe he's not been made aware of that, but I'd, I'd love to see Bruce's opinion as to whether or not the amount and type of landscaping and the maturity of the plant materials is, in his opinion, robust enough to overcome a reduction in, in the green space. Because, you know, we see a lot of really terrific landscaping plants, and and you know, we drive by the facility later, and they're, you know, they're six-inch plants, and and in the rendering, they're like three feet bushes, you know, right. forty-five so, years <coughs> um, from now, and you know, everybody's I, hanging out in the I, shade. I would love to to see uh, Bruce comment about that, and you know, he may come back and say, you know, great job, but you know, instead of you know one-inch caliper, you need three-inch calipers, you know, something. Um, yep. If we're going to use that as a you got time any, they got time anyways. Yeah, we got yeah we got to wait for the variances. So, yeah. <clears throat> so, so it was. So. Uh, yeah, so we've received comments from their landscape reviewer. We've returned the comments, but I think you're talking about reaching out additionally to confirm. Yeah, that, just um, for that one. Yep. For that one item. Yeah. The dumpster enclosure is what's that proposed to be made um, out of? Uh, right now, white vinyl. Fencing. So we've had uh, we've had some difficulty with how well you know those kinds of structures hold up over time. 
Um, always prefer to have the same material that's used for the core of the building facade be the same material for the dumpster yeah, enclosure. That's not a problem. If that's a requirement, we, we do that. Okay. Is that, is that something we should uh, pursue? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That whole southwest, let's call it quadrant, to the west of the entryway, that's all vacs, vacuums? Uh, yes, along the southern side of the property there. I believe we have 11 of them, 10 or 11. And the parking is mostly probably for staff? Correct, yeah. There's really no reason for a customer to get out of their car except to cause nope. problems. That's correct. <laughs> One, once or twice they might come into the, the office to purchase a membership, but you know we have two to two to six, two to eight staff done eight on maybe busy Absolutely. days, and those spots are for them, and the remaining are typically customers using the vacuum, the vacuum stalls. One thing I've noticed over time, and I guess more and more over time, is outside a lot of car wash operations on the street, in the winter it's always wet, and that section of the roadway gets damaged far more quickly, pitted and potholes and all that stuff um, before other areas, you know, parts of the road that are not right in front of the exit of the car wash. What's been your experience with, with that? It's, it's, yeah, it's certainly been an issue. You know, these cars do come out inherently wet and they're, and they're dripping, and um, I know it's something new that even though know, the DOT has noticed that. Um, it hasn't really warranted. They've talked about, you know, do you replace an entire lane with concrete there, and that it's never really warranted that. I will say we've moved to um, heated concrete pads at the entrance and the exit of the vehicle. In this longer run out, um, you know, for this site specifically, will certainly help, you know, give that car some extra dry time on the way out to Empire. So these pads are heated here? Uh, correct, yeah, the first 25 uh, feet on each side of the building are heated concrete. Have you ever been required to, I don't know, have some sort of agreement to make repairs to roads or anything like that? Not I to, haven't seen Not that. to my knowledge. What about, I mean, I'm thinking that the exit out into, uh, that's Baytown, right? to the yep. south and the center. Do you have any type of, uh, I mean, are they aware, the owners there aware of that? Um, I would have to look into that. I, I believe there's an existing um, uh, agreement with the, with the Taco Bell. So there's a cross access easement, I believe. Mm -hmm. So we, we'd be hoping to take over that if that's indeed what's in place, but we will certainly confirm that. With, with most of the cross access e easements that I've seen, there's always an agreement between the two sites on maintenance of the, the shared usage, but we'd have to check with, uh, yeah. with the team. Check with DeMarco, right? Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking, you know, unless you like throw tacos out your window, there's all that grease and stuff that <laughs> gets into the pavement. Wouldn't, wouldn't have as much impact as the car wash. I, I would bet uh, that most of the, the exiting will be out on the, on the, the Empire. Um, and very few will be coming out of there. Probably a lot of the people that use the vacuums and sit there and leave all their water on that. The on that there. pad. Yeah. Would you consider doing that all in concrete? I, I guess it's important to note the entire site is concrete pavement. Oh, it is. Yeah, just those two portions are heated by the building, so the entire site will be will concrete, be concrete. Not asphalt. <laughs> yep, with with expansion joints and you know joints for that um, and control joints as well. So, would that would that exit lane have a little bit of a pitch to it, so water wouldn't stand? It would drain. Yeah. It, it, I'd have to, well, certainly that's the goal. I know on Empire for sure that entrance does pitch back onto the site. Um, it's okay. a DOT requirement. And I, I will double check, but I believe that the, uh, the access point on, down to Bay, Baytown also will pitch back onto the site. 
because typically, you know, no one wants you spilling your water in the neighboring property. Right. So we, we tend to make a habit to catch all of our own water. Right. Town code prohibits it. Right. <coughs> any other questions? Vacuum cleaners, you address any issues? We got the, the noise with those vacuum cleaners, are pretty standard or? So I don't know that we, we weren't able to provide any actual attenuation data at this point. I will say that um, majority of the noise from these vacuums um, comes from the, Anthony or Alex, stop me if I'm wrong, the, uh, the vacuum motor pad and blower itself. Um, I believe at this site we can uh, eliminate this, this blower pad. Um, and by putting this right by Empire, a lot of that noise is going to be drowned out by Empire Boulevard itself, the background noise. Yeah, the, the, the difficulty with that is during the times of the week where there's not a lot of um, vehicular traffic out there and you might have more people cleaning their cars, then you will have um, noise generation from the vacuums. So we've had some other um, uh, car wash projects come to the town and I guess there's some new technology for these vacuums that, that are the very low zone uh, producing motors and uh, uh, you know the air vortex kind of dissipates before it exits the top of the the, the cone and um, I am not suggesting that you you, you do this but um, we've seen some some really good DB charts about what a typical vacuum uh, produces in terms of sound and what these new ones do and you know as compared to normal traffic sounds and mm -hmm. you know I know our vacuum supplier, we do have a, they call it a silencer on the outlet port of the turbine. So um, I, I got to imagine we can get something. I'm sure like they'll that. have, yeah. everybody's going to ask for this. Um, yeah. But, you know, while we're talking about that, th this is great. Um, but, you know, we, we generally don't accept like last minute information. We require information to be submitted the f previous Friday to the to the board hearing so that the board has an opportunity to really go through and review stuff. Um, so there might be some other questions, um, you know, as coming as, up based on the most recent submittal. Yeah. But certainly that's, that's one that, that jumps out. Um, some more information on yeah, and the vacuums, maybe some. next time you come in front of us, bring some stuff on the vacuums. Certainly. Bob, any questions? No, I'm sad. You took, you guys took two of the ones I had. In there. <laughs> you can have them. That was that was covered. <laughs> well, Terry was looking over your shoulder. He passed me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Steal Bob's question. Yeah. Okay, I'm good. Okay, I'd like to open it up for the audience. Uh, there's. Don't think there's anybody in. here. The auditorium at the moment that is interested in speaking. Let me check the phone lines. If there's any online comments, doesn't seem to be any. Thank you very much for your presentation. We will take in all the information. We'll probably have some additional questions. And um, did you guys have one? Uh, uh, we wanted to send anything to Lopez, or you guys all set with the uh, anything else? Personally, I'm, I'm comfortable with yeah, the architecture. Yeah, I, I, the, I, the, I, I mean, I've seen the washes the around town. Yeah. I think they're nice looking. No, and okay. just, just that one question for Bruce. If, and in fact, it would be, it would probably be helpful to the ZBA as well. Yeah, potentially. So, yes, thanks for your presentation. Nicely done. And we will call this hearing closed. Great. Thank you. Okay. We just need to wrap up our... You're welcome to stay, <laughs> if you'd like. It does sound fun. <laughs> yeah. The only thing that we're yeah. talking about is your application. <laughs> Nothing so. else going on that Thursday. <laughs> Does anybody have any uh, comments beyond what we discussed to put into a tabling resolution? No, this no. is a this is a perfect place in town for a, a car wash. 
It should have been, I think it should have been over near your house. To <laughs> more 41, actually. <laughs> that would have been I won't have, you know, I, I'd be there every day because I like to keep my car clean. Okay. Bob, any other comments? That, no. That looks, uh, looks good. Doug, you have the pertinent information that we've... I do. Questions? Yep. Mike, do you have any concerns about this? No, I mean, I think they've addressed most of our uh, concerns. Uh, we just need some more clarification on the stormwater aspect of the project just because uh, we do have code requirements for the 20% reduction in uh, runoff. So I just need calculation showing how they achieved that. So. Put that in the letter yep. for their next meeting. Okay. Terry, you want to move the table? I will uh, move to table this application tidings. I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Burton. Burton, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Tidings. Tidings, aye. Okay. Any other business that we need to discuss this evening? That's all I had for you guys tonight. All right, then we will adjourn. Thank you, everybody, for coming. Have a great holiday season. And uh, don't, uh, don't do anything stupid.